then of course we have done everything perfectly everything as specification but how are you sure that this is going to be there for the design life now isn't it first we talk of plastic if it is exposed to sun we seen that there is damage now isn't it so what is kind of damage is going to occur there of course time wise we said creep and all we have done now but here there is a chemical change in material now for which we have no remedy isn't it if it is a steel kind of thing what is it we do now for corrosion what is it we do for resting corrosion for steel galvanizing is common thing now agreed or people do some painting okay kuch na kuch kar rahe otherwise otherwise there is a sacrificial thickness we had increased thickness in the same way we had to carry it now so now again you use your common sense if a grid is there is a grid is there only surface is affected from top and bottom because the sun rays or whatever chemical damage is going to occur is only near the surface whereas the nano oven or oven geo textile if we ferment is exposed though it's a surface now isn't it so the damage is going to be more because of this also but then luckily we already mentioned this right in the my first lecture that most of these polymers are quite stable we talk of pet or polyester actually only that may be 3 to 10 ph others are stable from ph 2 to even 12 also so normally we are not bother about it we will we'll start checking this when you are going to have leachate in landfills or when you are using storage of this leachate such kind of chemical effluents when you have reservoirs for that also we will check that otherwise for normal soils i mean normal even c applications we don't bother about it this is for synthetic polymers now what is going to happen with respect to natural fiber materials definitely they will biodegrade isn't it so it's a matter of concern so in most cases now we are not worried about degradation because of the fact that we are actually using it for allowing turfing to grow big bar jab turfing aa gaya hai we are not worried about this in fact it becomes now manure matlab there is something which works both in life and death very rare you know when we are dead body is useless but unka to manure banta hai kam se kam theek hai na that is one way of looking at it in life but the other thing is that we already mentioned when you are using in payments now obviously thermal stability becomes important okay so this is a matter of concern so your specification for a material we are going to draw now is based upon starting with physical properties and then if you are designing for reinforcement naturally the strength and uh, what you call uh, friction if you are designing for drainage kind of thing filter kind of thing the hydraulic characteristics okay and then based on construction now durability during construction survivability it has survived the construction vagaries lastly after having placed everything now it has to be there for enough now now how long is life now again we come back to this question before we go to further how long is life what is the life of a structure here for walls we'll see that now we are designing them for i think venkat raman would have told you i hinted that we design from the creep viewpoint for 120 years also that means we are considering what is going the changes which are going to occur in the creep resistance for 120 years it doesn't mean that i am certifying for the concrete on the face here no i am bothered about my material i am also ensuring that the environment of all the things i am doing now what about this biological kind of thing naturally we said when down stuffing is going to come the greenery is going to come now we are not worried in fact it is very fantastic thing i went to germany in very cold weather minus temperatures naturally it's all covered by snow next to rain river now so the vegetation was about to come but it didn't come really so then after snow is melting again the vegetation is going up actually that may leaves as long as required this is the beauty of nature actually okay so the damage is done anyway but it is there till the grass grows there is of course grass in the other side also even in mid winter so biologically it's happy so they were not talking of life we are only talking of how long it will take for the turfing to grow in fact the, the the classification of materials of this is done in that life only there are some materials which are good for 6 years 6 months then 12 months and 36 months now which which indirectly means that 
It requires 36 months for the to grow because the difficult conditions are there. The rainfall is scanty, it's rocky surface now, you may have made a cover on that, or it could be snowy or whatever it is now. So based upon that now, the Erosion Technology Council actually specifies a material for that life required. But life really meant that the life time required for vegetation to grow. Because there is not giving any strength actually. The strength is only for laying basically, for unrolling it now. So naturally we are going to pack it up, up and down. So that is again considering the way you are going to construct the kind of seeding you are going to do. So all of them are going to come into picture now. But when you go to landfill application, it becomes more critical. Why? A landfill really constructed may be filled probably in the race, in a few years actually. Then we are going to cover it. But then it is a biology chamber. The changes are going to occur within the body. Even uh, all the biological waste is going to continuously decay. So it is going to produce gases, it is going to produce leachates now. So the leachate has not going to be there, it is going to be coming out because we are giving it any system now. So the geotestes being used for that have to be able to resist this. It may take 50 years. So only your grandchildren will be affected by that now. So that is why a landfill design is more crucial than anything else. That is why we use, as I said in the beginning, almost all kinds of geosynthetics in a landfill structure. Because criticality involved in that now. And I also mentioned that this last thing will keep in mind that being physically present is not sufficient for us now. Why? I put a geotextile, I got good characteristics, gradient ratio, long term water flow and everything else is perfect now. So it is placed there, construction perfect. But then slowly because of biological decay, algae is coming and sitting in the geotextile. So what is going to happen to flow now? There is no flow. We choked all the distance now. No, am I testing for algae? No. Algae fungi, I am not testing it, I am testing only for inorganic substances. So who is going to consider this now? If you don't consider what is going to happen now? So what is going to happen is now, all the gases which are going to come out also, will be coming out slowly. Leachates will cause much more kind of chemical changes now. So ek the problem of flow of water, or flow of this chemical waste, also gases coming out actually. Gases actually were caused to cause something like a bomb. It simply bursts actually. Because you know, so we need actually systems to collect gases also. Gas vents are there in rare cases, but system of collecting gases, one thing is I, I, people don't make chai out of it. That's a different issue. But gases will come, we have to see that they are diverted appropriately and uh, not form a gas chamber within the body. So that is the rare case when we are bothered about flow of not only water or leachates, also about gases. So this subject now is very vast that way. We are only dealing with a part of the subject. In a landfill now, we are bothered about how to contain that waste. But the changes that are going to happen now are very seriously con con uh, continue to be uh, discussed and used by the EPA. What is EPA? I think our professor will tell us. Environmental Protection Agency in USA, the most critical department in the world is EPA. They keep changing their documents every once in a while. And one of the best researches done on the subject is environmental control, particularly through landfills. Landfills again, as others, as well as municipal waste. Both have got a different kind of contamination. The systems, of course, in Germany are better, more uh, reacted to the ground. But EPA is very critical. I mean, those who want to work on that area, we don't want to work normally, and not people work on that. But the thing is that the structures you are going to build to contain them will be is really the most critical structure. And you have one man who has done such structures here, Mr. Sankaraman. He has done, I think, more than 100 landfills in the country, including hazardous waste also. As hazardous waste is something wherein we could do closure also, that means stopping also. Municipal solid waste, we are only dumping, dumping, dumping. We never have occasion to close it because there is no site available. So that is reality anyway. And by now, actually, if you, if you all follow Supreme Court regulations done 20 years back, Every town having got population of one lakh needs a landfill. It's not there. Only in metro cities is there. Okay, so it is a human problem also. That what I'm saying is that we complain when there's a road which is going bad, like our road to the bridge. But then this is much more serious than that now. 
and I think probably the solution will come only because of geophysics. There is no other purpose of solution other than choosing the right kind of material and that is coming through testing. So, this gave you some kind of idea. So, the first thing is of course, we need to know what is the polymer. Now, none of us want to become experts in polymer. So, we send to polymer laboratory, whether in IITs or any other laboratory. We have a CPET here actually, Central Institute of Plastic Technology. Usually, people send their samples to the CPET actually and they have laboratories throughout the country. So, we are all used to sending any plastic material for testing there. So, they will identify. Otherwise, it is done through uh, this bottom part, we will come back again. So, we have identification through naturally TGA or X-rays and things like that and uh, we only get the information now. Now, why we are bothered about the polymer? <coughs> because of the characteristics. Apart from that, you know, we are having additives we mentioned yesterday. Supposing we are talking of uh, adding carbon black in that now. It is not that putting carbon black into that. How it is going to disperse the entire medium? It is not well dispersed in the medium. Naturally, it is not going to function. That means some portions of this geosynthetic are going to be uh, vulnerable to solid some are not now. So, the diffusion of the entire thing of the, that means the, the carbon black has to be in the finest form. If you see my earlier book which I mentioned here, it will tell you all the details, but I do not want to teach all that now. Point is that we require a certain chemical to get its long term stability, particularly for ultraviolet rays. And sometimes we add a plasticizer also. Sometimes we are adding, we have seen the other day, I think somebody has seen that filler. So, we got a lot of things which are going to be there. So, we need to find out has he coated on the surface? Has he painted a black paint on the surface? Or has he really got this carbon black diffused? No, it is not painting, really, it is called dyeing. So, dyeing is not going to give you anything at all. So, this is the important point we have to see that now. Not only about the basic polymer now, we are bothered about what are the other chemicals which are there and which ought to be there for the performance. Okay? So, third aspect is to chai hoga as you go further. And then thickness. Thickness is one of the simplest things. If you can hoga, if you can crush it or you can reduce thickness, just the fingertips only. So, how to measure thickness now? I am used to measure thickness by microscope or by vernier calipers or whatever it is now. So, here we can't do this. We have to apply given pressure, then we can do that. So, this pressure has been discussed a lot of times, at least in the early days of my work now, people were saying uh, 8 kPa, 6 kPa, 10 kPa, 20 kPa pressure applied actually. So, what we did at IT was, we had something like a wicket separator side, this is not that, something like wicket separator, you know, which you use for some other things, uh, sound, uh, what do you call as, uh, settling, <coughs> cement setting. So, that is there now. So, we have got a plate, a rigid plate at the bottom, or which you put a plate, which is going to be giving you 2 kilopascals. The plate size is going to be 25 centimeter square, usually that is circular only. And then it has got a weight which will give you 2 kilopascals load. So, then the thickness is measured. This is the base plate and this is the entire thing now. So, it actual measurement is very simple. Just lift it, there is a dial gauge there, it can be any other means also, place of geotextile of a given size. Okay, earlier people used to have square and rectangle, you do not worry too much on that. We are measuring thickness at a given pressure now. Now, this pressure is going to be standard 2 kilopascals. So, when the thickness always is going to be 2 kilopascals. But then if you want to get compressibility, we have to apply different pressures. So, we have systems up to 20 kPa usually. Now, what is it going to give you? The compressibility. Now, why am I about compressibility now suddenly? If it is going to be compressed now, that means if we are going to bury 1 meter below or 2 meter below or 4 meter below, the pressure is going to compress the voids now. So, the flow gas is going to be changing now. So, instead of doing that permeability test so long now, I would rather find out compressible or not right in the beginning without spending much money on this now. Quickly I can do it. I have to just change the load only. Okay, instead of 2 kb plate, I will put 8 kb plate, 15 kb plate. So, we have published a lot of papers on that earlier, but that is not anything very great. So, test is performed as part of EN uh, or ISO test now <coughs> for multilayer kind of thing. So, multilayer gilly is much more uh, critical actually because you know it will be not plain, it will be wavy. So, we have to measure it very carefully, otherwise, you get wrong data. But really, when you get the flow also, the multiple layers you are going to put now, flow can be occurring between the layers also. So, this characteristic becomes important for those who are doing research on the subject. So, this is the apparatus which we have designed. 
Reside view is here. And then if you try to go through the membranes, we use different apparatus, different kind of things, but they use a higher pressure also. So, we will not bother about that. that is the high pressure equipment which you had. The sample is here now. This gives higher pressure than 2 kPa for membranes and also for carpets. Because you know carpets are usually thick now. So, this pedal equipment is actually meant for carpets and also uh, grids and membranes. So, then of course, we are interested in finding out if it is a grid. You are engineers, I do not think I have to tell you how to measure this now. You can take a photo of this one, you can expand it or you can take calipers, you can find out the, the size of the opening in these grids now. It is not critical for us because we are going to measure thickness and things like that. But then fundamentally, is it the same thing as quoted by the supplier, manufacturer. So, from the purposes now, we need to know the grid size actually, otherwise it does not have any function. So, then mass. So, what we are going to do now, we are going to place a, a material of known dimension, find out the weight, otherwise there is nothing great about this now. Specimens are cut, preferably if the circular cutter, the number depends upon the specimen size, minimum this much. So, that is a not a very difficult kind of test. Difficulty is coming in actually in getting a shape. How do you get a regular shape? I want a circle now. You know, we take Kenchi and start getting like this. It will never be perfect circle. There are also projections now. So, we need a jaw actually, which will compress. We need a cutter actually, a cutting jaw. And what they do is they fold this geosynthetic uh, geotextile into a number of layers now, use their machine, and then it simply gives you correctly exactly the same thing. That is why I do not have any shares. Raymond and people actually they have the cutters for all our shapes actually. This today is leather cutting but then it gives you. Now, this cutting is a problem also in a way, if you have a open geotextile, what is going to happen now? The strands keep coming out. So, that will be a heated cutter, okay. Oh, Jalja Aigi, let us say, it slightly becomes molten. I cannot put too high, too high temperature also. So, the cutting system is not as easy as you think. To make a circular sample looks very simple. So, we used to, our students used to do it, they take a day just to make even samples because we did not have a job to do that now, okay. So, this something there. Then we need dumbbell kind of thing for testing of membrane. So, they require that jars actually, uh, some specimen jars to do all that work. So, here it is, as I said, uh, this initial research which we have done and today we try to measure this <coughs> accurately. So, then of course, comes the question of the opening size. How to measure this size now? I have to go to microscope, ultra microscope or normal microscopes. How do you measure this? Now, what is the principle of our normal sieve analysis? What is the basis for that now? You have sieves are different sizes, is it not? Opening is different. The smallest, finest size is going to be at the bottom now. Centromicrons is at the bottom now. And at the top, it will be 150, 300 like that. It keeps going up, isn't it? So, the largest size of the opening is at the top and the smallest is at the bottom now. Now, soil is a mixture of all the particle sizes now. So, you are getting actually what is the quantity retained on each sieve, is it not? And then doing your gimmicks, total percent finer and whatever it is now, you have to do it now. Now, just do the reverse of it now. What reverse now? Instead of the sieve which you are using now, you replace at least take one, what do you call the sieve, replace the actual sieve mesh with the geotester. Now, we do not know this particle size, the opening size now. So, now you put beads of known size. There, the sieve opening size is known, the particle size is not known. Here, we are doing the reverse thing now. We are actually using glass beads, which are perfect, you know, when glass um, flows actually into water, it actually becomes perfect bead. The only spherical thing in the world naturally formed is only because of the system now. These glass beads are very expensive, forget about that. So, you have standard glass bead sizes actually. So, put the heaviest, I mean largest one at the top or smallest one at the top, whatever it is now. So, naturally, the finer ones will come out now. Like this now, we can find out the percentage retained on this now. Okay, supposing you keep doing the smallest to largest particle size actually, 5 percent is retained on that now. What it means now? 95 percent is finer, isn't it? It is like D95 basically. So, over 95 is actually reflecting you that 5 percent is coarser than that. And 90 percent is finer than that. So simple. So you need now glass beads. 
So a small packet, 100 grams will cost you a few hundred rupees. Now we can't spend this money on regularly. We can't afford it. So what we do now, we take sand. We sieve it. You don't have these sieves in our laboratory. Go to chemistry, uh, chemical engineering laboratory. They have finer sieves than this also. So you crush the sand actually, make into finer size than the normal sand, good sand, not compressible sand, you know, good uh, natural sand. And then you crush it to different things. You use the sieves, finer sieves which are there with the chemical engineering laboratory. And then you get now sand particles of uniform size within a range. Obviously, it will not be perfect like glass beads. But you get like this. Sorry, before that, I also want to mention that the glass beads are very good in a sense, but then they get entrapped into the geotestile because there is a static charge on that actually. So, for that, you have to put an anti static spray. Actually, my student, you know, you know that earlier we used to have a small bottle. That bottle was costing 350 rupees. So, you have to spray that. So, the process of sieving by the glass beads is very expensive, so nobody does it now. But then these particles are so fine because you know the glass beads are a bit heavier than the soil particles because they are totally crystalline. So anyway, here now you got sand particles of known sizes basically. And then what you do now? Yeah, you do like this now. So what we are doing now? We got the same kind of mesh. So this is now the mesh is replaced with the geotextile, except that at the bottom there is also a coarser mesh because you know geotextile may we weighed down by the water which is coming now. So you place the beads, whatever you want to place, sand particles now, and spray water, so that there is no anti-static reason, water will prevent all that now. And so what is going to happen now? Because the spray is water is there now, whatever fines are there, they will quickly come out. We have to ensure that nothing is trapped within the body. The glass beads are sand also, we should ensure that nothing is trapped. So we have to weigh the retain and weigh the passing through. But it's coming through naturally a pipe and we got a funnel and this funnel obviously we have got a filter paper kind of thing. So like we do in chemistry laboratory, we weigh what is passing through this, what is dried after this, it has to match exactly. In normal sieving also it's supposed to match but you know we cook up. But <laughs> Otherwise your value is gone for it. Okay, so that is the way in which we do it now. Otherwise the material is very simple. We have we can always have drawings on this. This is a different set of seeds, this is glass beads and things like that. Yeah, this is one picture now, which gives you now the opening side distribution. Now, we repeat, this opening side distribution is helping us a lot actually compared to the natural filters, natural rains created by Carl Tazagi. Because we get the opening size distribution now, not only a typical size, we can get distribution by having particles of different sizes now. So, this is going to be very useful and replaces such thick filters or thick drains by the smallest kind of thing. You remember, uh, I went once long back to a dam under construction in Karnataka. The, the entire drain was about 10 meters actually. We got different kind of soils which are there, one by one, one by one. And today we don't have that kind of quality of soil which you ensure. Contact will bring whatever you want to bring. Here is a shoot kind of thing and there's no further problem. You can get it and design is very simple because on either side, whatever the soil now, will ensure that is going to be working like a drain or whatever it is. So then we will not complete this now, but then what we have to re remember is that mechanical properties which are thinking were essentially to get the strength. That's what we said actually, first mechanical property. But it's not necessarily as simple as that. For that only I have given you a list of things. What is that now? Number one, short term tensile strength and dependent deformation. Long term tensile behavior, that means creep and creep rupture. Long term compressive creep behavior with and without shear stress. Resistance against impact or punching, which means survivability. And then static puncture test, rapid puncture test. Resistance against abrasion. And then production efficiency, damage during installation. And then internal strength of the material. And then GSC reinforcement, segmental littering wall unit connection testing. The many things which are going to be actually important. It's not just we are getting one value, either by the narrow weight, the narrow strip or wide width. It reflects on everything else. Why it reflects now? We are already planning to do that constant variability now. So material gets more damage if it is weaker, is it not? If it is not, if it is strong naturally, damage is going to be always less now. So indirectly, the strength value, with respect to the kind of geostatic, is going to influence the variability during construction. It also influences the damage during long term. Durability also because you know, if it is very strong now, 
particularly material, rigid material, we'll only get damage in surface. So the strength will be intact anyway. So this, all these things will reflect actually the totality of this. That's why we say not properties, always we say characteristics now. Okay, the other thing is that a test we may not be doing as part of it now, the connection strength, that means actual strength, connection load between quarter fascia and the reinforcement is now one of the most critical parameters today. Okay, I think none in this country are doing it except IIT Madras, which was helped actually by Mr. Sankit Raman, who is a Garvare to IIT Madras. He gave the assignment to them, they developed a small equipment. We intend to develop it very shortly actually, because this is critical now. To, to avoid, to minimize the likely failures or likely distress of most of the valves now, we need to find out what is the load they can actually carry. It could be done in the field also, but before that we assess in the laboratory. We make a kind of tank, a test tank kind of thing. We see that the system is placed and then pulled out actually. It's like a pull-out test actually. So then what I'm trying to say is that even this is based upon the strength only. Now in all these things, one more thing I want to add is that it is very easy to think that I am going to simply grip on both sides and then do that for our machine has got capability now. Now grip really meant what? I am supposed to gripping, my hand is not complete but it is gripping like this now. It is a plastic material, if I do not grip properly, it will slide. If I am gripping properly or much more than was required, it will get compressed, it will shear there only. So years back I went to one of the famous laboratories in Germany near Munich, TBU actually. So somebody has brought a glass grid sample. There is a level of a man who is more than an assistant professor, who is working as a technical superintendent. So he was doing the test now. I asked him what is the cost of the basic testing system. Those days I'm talking of, it was 40,000 euros. Okay, actual grips, that is machine actually. The grips which has got number of grips. He was trying one grip, other grip, no, he was not happy. He took two of us to do this test actually. Finally, he said, sorry, you bring more sample. This is not adequate. He's not happy with himself. So I asked him, what is the cost of the grips now? We were changing the plates actually. He said the grips cost more than the equipment. The equipment cost is 40,000. This will cost 60,000 rupees. So the kind of grips you are having makes a lot of difference now. So earlier, if you look at ASM standards, they were all mechanical kind of grips now. That means you are tightening them by screws. I will show you what we have done at IIT also, imitating the ASM standards actually. So you are putting two plates together and in the sample you make a hole and then tie it with nut and bolt. We could of course make it actual anyway, but now that's not acceptable because the tightening based on experience. So we have now hydraulic grips. So we apply water pressure required for that particular sample now and ensure that it's there now. The other thing which is also going to happen, which you will learn actually when you go to the laboratory, will be that if you don't do things perfectly, it may start failing like this. That means you are not seeing that the whole sample is under tension. Sometimes it fails at the grip itself. So it's not on the value only. We said we are going to test 10 to 12 specimens now. Each specimen has to weigh. That means you have to really take a photograph of each test and I mean videograph of everything we are doing and show to the client or show to our researchers that all the 10 tests are done appropriately such that the whole sample is loaded completely. The whole sample is under tension and then it is informed tension. Failure didn't occur near the grip itself. So that's why the testing is always critical. It is not mechanical, like you know, putting a rod in a tension testing machine and then getting a wage, and our technician or a labor is giving the value. So, this is always a high level, uh, what do you call super important kind of testing. Okay, and then of course, other things are already there with us. And uh, then, of course, I have another problem, I will show you that problem. So, we come back on this now. So, when you try to, you see this, you are able to see this, this side now. Here is got something, I will come back to this again. You see this, what he's trying to do, this is a flexible kind of geogrid. Now we can't hold a flexible kind of geogrid by hand, I mean by grip. So what you do, put a roller grip or called capstan grip actually. So obviously earlier I had a grip only. So I knew what is the distance between the grips now. That is the L of the sample. Then delta L I am going to measure continuously. So I am getting the strain continuously. I said we want a strain curve, common sense. But now it is actually gripped over a roller. So there is no standard spacing for the I mean, grip spacing we are going to have it now. So what do I need now? I need a laser extensor meter to be sticking on the surface uh, which is not shown here and then I measure that independently between 
two lines I am going to draw. So that means number one is the grips. I forgot something in between. The machine which are going to use for testing itself. One is it will be a high capacity, but then it's supposed to be CRE machines. I'm going to note down concentrated of elongation machines. Okay? That means during the entire testing now, rate of elongation has to be same, which is not so in our testing. We are not bothered about this actually. Because you know, we don't have to do the same thing. But here it's not like that. Rate of elongation has to be maintained through and through till failure. Because as the load increases now, the machine is under, suppose you are applying tension actually, the machine is under compression. And towards the end actually, it will release all the load on the sample. So there's a phase like a third. Here we can't afford to do that. It has to be having same elongation failure, same rate of elongation till failure and beyond failure also. I want to see if it is working beyond that also. Because you know, I have to see what is the post, um, post peak behavior we call it actually. So the point is that now this session is different actually. And the speed of testing we will also see is different for the narrow strip and different for wide Why? Narrow strip is about tessile testing, 100% rate of elongation. Whereas the testing which are doing by width actually, earlier it was 10%, today 20% accepted by ASO. 20% rate of elongation. Okay, so that means there is much more within the system than what is apparent on the surface. So it's not just getting a value, it is getting a total session characteristics under simulated field conditions other than confinement. Now, other thing about confinement I forgot to mention was that when once you have non oven geotextile, it is influenced in the strength because you get compressed. But oven, strong oven is not affected by that. The grid is not affected by that. So, we are not worried about confinement in testing normally. And the strength value of non oven is not critical for us. We are not designing for strength. We just want working kind of capacity for that now when laying, when installing the material. So, only in the strong geotextile and of course, geo grids. We are worried about strength now, so that they are unaffected by the confinement, so there can be in isolation also, okay. I think we will stop today at this and the next presentation we will actually get actual details of the testing probably before you go there or after you come back, whatever it is we will see that now, okay. Thank you then.